So what do you do with all these little bass buttons? All eight of them. I've had so many people ask me this question. Some accordions have more bass buttons than others. Like this one has eight basses, some have 120. But even when you know how they're laid out, what do you do with them? How do you play them so that your songs sound more interesting? If you've asked the same questions, give this video a thumbs up as I'll be covering seven of the most common bass rhythms that you can learn and that will make your music sound good. I'm including some of the basic patterns and then we'll be jumping into some patterns common in the Latin world like the Nuevo Tango and the Rumba. If you want a free resource that teaches a lot more bass rhythms, follow the link in the description to get our free jumpstart guide to your bass buttons. This ebook is filled with helpful diagrams, like this, of the bass layout, bass notations for various rhythms. I'll put that in the description below for you to download. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss any of our new videos. That helps us continue to bring quality resources to educate, inspire, and empower you to reach your musical potential. One of the essential rhythms that you need in your collection is the waltz. The waltz rhythm has three beats. It's played as a bass, chord, chord, bass, chord, chord. Some of the most common waltzes you might know would be Edelweiss from The Sound of Music, one of my favorites, The Blue Danube, the famous second waltz by Shostakovich, or even Billy Joel's song, The Piano Man. So to get started with this pattern, here's how it looks on the accordion. The first two rows are the deep bass notes. These are the same type of notes you hear on a double bass. These other four rows are the chords. These are what you hear on a rhythm guitar. They make up the major chord, minor chord, seventh chord, and diminished chord. And if you'd like to know more about the bass systems, I go into much more detail in this video here. To play the waltz, you need a bass note followed by two chords. For this example, we will use the C bass, which is usually a textured or a dip button in the middle of your bass section. So here's my bass section in the middle. Here's my C with a little bit of texture. Put your fourth finger on the C bass, which is in the second row from the bellows. Here's row one, row two, my imaginary bellows. Place your fourth finger there, and then place the third finger right next to it. Keep in mind, when the accordion is on, it will feel like your third finger is behind finger four. Now, before I go on, I want to mention that there are two schools of thought for which fingers you should use on the bass buttons of the accordion. There are pros and cons to both. I just showed you the 4-3 method, and I'll explain in a second why I recommend it. But there's another way that some people play their basses, and that is with the 3-2 method. Finger three on the bass note and finger two on the chord. If you look at the anatomy of your fingers, the third finger is much longer than the second finger. And at first glance, it seems like the most logical fingering to use because of the anatomy of the hand. And since on the accordion, the bass note rows are farther forward than the chord buttons. I find most self-taught accordion players immediately use this fingering because it's the easiest as a beginner and because of the layout, it's most logical. The second reason to use this would be in advanced music when you need to use the fifth finger to reach far distances. And yes, I said the fifth finger. So there's a larger spread between fingers three and five. Then there is fingers four and five. Now the cons to the 3-2 method are that when you get outside of the very basic rhythm patterns for the bass, you run into trouble because the third finger now has double duty playing the bass buttons and what we call the alternating bass button. This causes constant crossovers and leaves a lot more room for errors because this one finger is trying to do all the work. This would be like trying to run a race using a gunny sack. While everyone else has two legs to run the race, here you are stuck hopping. 
You'll see this more in action when we get to the base rhythms after the waltz. So why do we at Accordion Life Academy teach our students the 4-3 method? One reason is that it allows the wrist to be at a better angle for playing and maneuvering around the bass bends, especially for more advanced playing. This fingering with the finger four on the, on the bass and finger three on the chord and the second finger on the alternating bass is a position which allows you to be much more accurate. When your fingers are properly placed above each bass button, where each finger has a single job, there is less chance to miss the notes. Using fingers four and three is also much faster and efficient, and the quality of the sound is also improved because you have more control. So what are the cons to this method? I'm glad you asked. There's only really one. And that is when you first start learning to play the bass buttons, it doesn't feel as natural to begin with because finger four isn't as long as finger three. So in order to reach the bass buttons properly, you do have to shift your arm farther in through the bass strap to be in a good position to play. And this is a good thing. You don't want to be reaching for your bass buttons. You should be far enough in that your fourth finger is right above the bass button not flat like this and reaching for those bass buttons. This will allow you to play on the very tips of your fingers, which will give you a good sound. One final note about this before we jump back into our bass rhythms. In the end, as you become more advanced on the accordion, you will actually learn to use both methods, the 4-3 and the 3-2. If you start learning with the 4-3 method and let that be your primary method, then when you need to use the 3-2 fingering, it will be very easy. To go the other way from the 3-2 method to the 4-3 is not as easy because your brain is already wired to play with what is most convenient. I will add though, before we go on back to the rhythms, is that if you have played the accordion for 30 plus years with the 3-2 method, don't feel like you need to change now because it'll just be frustrating. The 3-2 method does work, it's just we don't find it as efficient in the long run. So it's not frustrating, continue if you've already been using that for a long time, and let's go right back into the patterns. Now that you're in position using the 4-3 method or the 3-2 method, the waltz pattern is bass, chord, chord, bass, chord, chord. Let's hear this in action slowly. And now fast. Be sure to keep your basses short and the chords even shorter so that you don't overpower the melody that is usually produced in the right hand keyboard side. To use waltz rhythm with the minor chords, use your index finger, finger two, in the fourth row instead of finger three like this. Now let's look at the polka rhythm. This is what it looks like. Four, three, two, three. And it's in a triangle shape. When you start learning this pattern, start slowly and keep your basses short. It's easy for beginners to play long notes on the bass notes, mostly because they're just trying to survive. They're afraid to lose their spot if they let go, so they hang on those bass buttons for dear life, which causes their bass notes to drag heavily, and it's not such a good sound. Keep your fingers close to the buttons so you don't get lost. You don't want flying fingers, because for sure you will lose your position and get lost. Then you'll go back to searching for that dimple dip or rhinestone on your base and you will have to start all over again. And here's a quick tip for you. When you're looking for the C base, instead of feeling around with it with the tips of your fingers, flatten your hand over the base buttons and you'll find it a whole lot easier. Let's look at the position and fingering if the polka uses the minor chords. It looks like this, four, two, three, Two. Here is the polka with major chords in a small triangle shape. Here it is with minor in the bigger triangle shape. If you download the free jumpstart guide to your bases, I've included all the fingering inside this ebook for you. Now, for one of my favorite, the tangos. There are two types of tangos, the traditional tango and the modern tango, or nuevo tango. Let's take a look at the traditional tango first. Probably the most famous known traditional tango is La Compercita.
At tango dance events, this is usually played at the very end as the farewell tango to the end of the evening. I play in a tango quartet called Tango Volcado, and we actually like to stick this one in just before intermission. So I guess we kind of break that rule of waiting to play it at the end of the concert. We play a different tango at the end. More on that in a moment. For this traditional tango rhythm, it's bass, chord, 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 bass, bass. In order for the basses to have that power and resonance for the tango rhythm, you really have to make sure you always pull the bellows first before you play the bass. I can cover bellow techniques in a future video if you would find that helpful. Just let me know in the comments below. The second type of tango rhythm that will take your repertoire to the next level is the Nuevo Tango. It was made famous by Astor Piazzolla. He really brought the popularity of the accordion back. It takes a lot of energy to play his music, which ranges from very intense, edgy sounds to beautiful lyrical melodies that have a lot of emotion. This tango style incorporates elements of jazz and classical genres. As you see, this rhythm is generally in a minor mode. And by the way, the tango you just heard, that is what we play at the end of our concerts in Tango Volcano. It uses a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two rhythm. When we play it, the basses and chords are often played together, which gives it a more powerful full sound. The march is a straightforward pattern with a very strong, solid beat. The bass chord combination is the same as the polka, but its tempo can vary depending on the march and the tempo isn't as fast as the polka. Someone I enjoy listening to who does the marches very well is Andre Ryu. As he begins the marches, the audience starts clapping right in beat with him, especially when they hear this march. A tarantella is a style of dance. It's among the most recognized forms of traditional Southern Italian music. When I was in Italy in 2007 competing for my first world championship title, it was so fun to hear the Italians play the tarantella and watch the dancers in the streets. The Italians, they know how to have fun. And of course, I love their accent and they are such friendly people. The bass pattern is the same as the polka, but the rhythm is different. This rhythm is in 6-8 time, meaning you have to count up to 6 over and over, but you only play on 1, 3, 4, and 6. Not confusing at all. But let me make it easy for you, and since it's from Italy, we will use this phrase to feel the rhythm. Make spaghetti. Make spaghetti. And now fast. A Latin rhythm that originated in Cuba with a little African influence is the rumba. You can use this particular bass rhythm in lots of music, even if it's not an official rumba piece. I've used it in a variety of songs such as Spanish Eyes, Fly Me to the Moon, and even pieces like Earth Angel. Again, it uses the same pattern as the polka, but the rhythm phrase I have my students use for this just to get the feel for it is, let's go rumba, let's go rumba. fun rhythm and another one of my favorites. If you like it too, hit the like button and let me know. There are many other rhythms possible in the accordion and we highlight several more inside the Jumpstart Guide to Your Basses. You'll find that in the description below. But if you really want to get deep and have the ultimate resources to learn your basses, I invite you to check out our full online course, Mastery of Your Bass Buttons. So many accordionists spend a lot of time figuring out the right hand of the accordion and understandably so as typically that's where the melody is played and you can actually see the keyboard if you want to. But it is the bass that drives everything in music. If you're a pianist, you know how important it is to focus on the left hand bass line. The same is true for the accordion. 
How we play the bass and the quality of our bass technique determines the quality of our overall sound. It's like listening to a beginning violin student who is learning bowing technique. So many screeching sounds, but as they learn the correct amount of pressure and the movement, the sound quality changes and improves. It's the same with the basses of the accordion, except there's no screeching sound, or at least there shouldn't be. Thanks for watching today. Let me know in the comments what bass rhythms you're going to add to your repertoire, and I will see you in the next video.